Patricia. Welcome. Hi, Amber. I'm happy to be here today. Oh, great. Well, I'm excited about our conversation. Today, we are going to talk about sex and ADHD, and I think it's going to be a fun conversation. So I'm going to start the conversation off by just asking for you to introduce yourself, Patricia. Who are you professionally and personally? Well, professionally, I am Patricia Rich. I have a consulting and coaching practice. Mm -hmm. I'm also a certified um, sex therapist and uh, something called an internal family systems therapist. So I have been creating a model for bringing together sexuality with a particular model of personality. Um, and that is colored by my own experience as someone who identifies as having, I would say, mild ADHD and a family with many family members with ADHD. So it's been a part of my life. It's not the central focus of my practice, but it's something I'm aware of and that I really enjoy helping people to navigate um, and really take advantage of some of the ways that um, these two as very important aspects of who we are and aspects of life can play together or conflict at times and how to navigate that. Yes, unfortunately, conflict sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, I, I am definitely passionate about talking about how people can, you know, use their ADHD strengths and use tools to help manage their ADHD. And when it comes to sex, absolutely. I want everybody to have pleasure. I want everybody to feel good. I want people to have great relationships. And I have recognized with many of my clients that ADHD symptoms get in the way sometimes of good sex, good connection, intimacy, all of that. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, I can't wait to hear your take on that. Yeah. So my first question is going to be about sex is going to be how can sex be impacted by ADHD? So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts and opinions yeah. about that? So if I may, I want to go back a step and talk about what is sex. Oh, yes right? Because a lot of times people have a very automatic definition of sex. They're picturing intercourse. They're picturing heterosexual couple in a missionary position, you know, who knows? Like, so people can have all sorts of automatic assumptions about what sex is. So when I talk about sexuality, I think about that as your life force energy, um, which you can um, experience in lots of different ways and that there are ways that um, involve direct stimulation of our genitals and possibly arousal and orgasm, but also that sex and sexuality incorporates a whole lot more like affection and movement and lots of different ways of building intimacy with ourselves and others. Of course, of course. Yeah, it is a concept out there that we do, you know, somebody says sex, it automatically goes to intercourse, but it's mm -hmm. a spectrum of so many other things that mm -hmm. really make somebody connected to another human or connected to themselves even mm -hmm. sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful so With that, now I don't remember the original question. <laughs> <laughs> the original question, no worries. The question was, how can sex be impacted by ADHD mm. in your opinion? Okay. Well, how can't it? It's sort of coming up. <laughs> okay, <let's start> <laughs> it's so many different, there's so many different, you know, ways, you know, so ranging from motivation to be engaged in a sexual activity, mm -hmm. you know, for some people, they don't have a very strong sex drive. I was just working with someone this week, actually, who is someone who doesn't have a very strong sex drive. She has a lot of ADHD and her mind goes everywhere. And the combination of not a lot of physical urgency and then her mind hopscotching all over the place mm -hmm. um, means it's really hard for her to even create um, opportunities or dates. She never initiates and her partner gets upset with her because he wants to feel like she's thinking about him and desiring him. And so, you know, just some of those Absolutely. kinds of executive functioning skills of scheduling mm -hmm. and remembering and getting it, initiating. you know, get initiating it, um, you know, can be an issue. Um, also when people feel overwhelmed managing other tasks of life, um, and this may be someone who's a parent or someone who has a very demanding job. There just might be so many other things creating so much exhaustion and mental stress 
that it's hard to prioritize sex and create a scenario in which it's likely to happen with another person. Absolutely. I was just going to bounce off that idea because yeah, having ADHD and not managing emotions well, or not managing stress or just having a million things to do in one day, Mm -hmm. it doesn't leave much energy. It doesn't leave enough spoons or enough energy at the end of the day for somebody to maybe initiate something with their partner or have Mm -hmm intimate conversations that could lead to other intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it really is a whole, a whole picture of sometimes taking care of stress first and prioritizing Mm -hmm. what's important. And on the other hand, you know, for some people, you know, sex is very regulating, you know, it's an outlet that is um, really helps to calm the nervous system to kind of set other things aside for a while to immerse, to have a good time, you know, to channel a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And so it can be either a really great outlet and source of connection for someone like that and something that's actually kind of organizing. Um, Or if someone kind of turns to sex to compensate or over focus on that to the exclusion of other life tasks or responsibilities or agreements, perhaps, almost like a hyper fixation or like a, a hyper fixation, either turning to one's partner with a lot of need and urgency and maybe not making the person feel very special or heard, but more of like a self need, a needy kind of space that can be kind of a turn off in a relationship. And sometimes people can really get into a lot of compulsive sexual behaviors. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying any of these behaviors are inherently problematic, but if they're not within the scope of your agreements in your relationship, they can be right. So if it's excessive porn use, or you don't have an open relationship, and you're getting involved with other people or whatever it is, if there's a lot of compulsion around that, or kind of a drive that um, people have a hard time reining in, of course, that's going to have repercussions in your relationship. And I love how you said not within the agreement of the relationship. And that, that touches upon, you know, the idea that within relationships, we all have agreements and we, in a healthy relationship, there are agreements about what is acceptable. what's not acceptable. What's, you know, gonna create a bond together and what could break that bond between people. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think all of those things you said, in addition to, like you originally said that sometimes it is a matter of releasing energy. It could help people release energy, but if it becomes the only coping skill they use to release their energy or to regulate their nervous system or help regulate their, their emotions, then it can turn into that compulsive behavior almost. Like I need this to help me focus or I need this to do this. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. I like to have lots of tools in my bag. Mm-hmm. Sex being one. Right. right. <laughs> Other coping skills are also. Yeah. I think that the idea of choice, you know, we might talk a lot about pro-choice in other ways regarding sexuality, but this idea that we could have a choice in the moment, you know, that we can choose how we're approaching someone or not approaching them, that we could choose to engage in something or not. It's like, you know, learning how to introduce that pause, um, I think can be really helpful for people, whether they're the more um, perhaps distracted in attentive end of the spectrum or have a more driven kind of compulsive feeling within themselves, you know, to remember that I can always pause. Um, I actually came up with an acronym that I use uh, okay. to help people with that if I could. And I call it just taking a few beats on um, B-E-A-T-S and um, be like Bob. So um So to just take a a moment when you have an opportunity or you're thinking about initiating or someone's approached you and just take a moment to check your body and breath, um, to notice your emotions, that's the E, um, to notice your actions, what are you actually doing or what are your impulses to act, um, what thoughts are going through your head. And then the S is self-wisdom, you know, kind of what does your wisest self say right now? Ooh, I love that beats. Yeah, okay. Take a few beats and you can do that very quickly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it just helps people to recenter themselves so that they're not, not just, you know, kind of just in, you know, going yeah. with some sort of impulse or instinct, 
that maybe later they're going to regret or it's not going to be received as well by a partner who maybe feels like they're not being seen or, you know, approached with an invitation. That totally makes sense. I love that acronym. That's great. I think it can be applied to a lot of different aspects of life too. And not for sure. Absolutely. Another issue that can come up is, um, again, I'm talking about now partnered relationships, but there's many other ways that people obviously have uh, experienced their sexuality. But Mm -hmm. if a partner has become resentful because of responsibilities that aren't being fulfilled or they feel like the partner isn't um, holding their weight and gets to, to feeling parent, like more like the parent or the grown up in the room oh, that can really interfere with a sexual dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially because- with ADHD, if one partner is more inattentive, messy, just not, not realizing the impact of their behaviors on the other person, then absolutely the ripple effect can affect their intimacy and their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something I like to teach people also is to uh, think about the first, I have another set of acronyms called the S's um, of sexual self-energy actually, but like the first is safe, right? So are you feeling safe and is your partner feeling safe right now? And safe can be physically safe, you know, um, in terms of, you know, real danger to your body, but it's also kind of emotionally safe and physically comfortable, Mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes people will, you know, jump into sexual activity without ensuring that that's in place, right? And so, like, I was thinking of this because if someone's in more of the, like, feels parent, like the parent in the relationship, Mm-hmm. They're not feeling that confidence or safety, perhaps to really surrender to the other person. Right. That other person isn't really their backup or their, mm-hmm. right. You know, they, they don't have each other's backs. It mm-hmm. feels like an unequal yeah. dynamic. Yeah. And there's ways to work with that in the bedroom, right? Like, so that even if someone says, you know what, I know, you know, I know I, you know, the ladders are still all over the living room and I didn't finish that project and you know, we have some things to work out, but that being said, like if that person can show leadership and just say, you know what, we have some time together. I really love you. Can we leave all that aside for a minute and just be together right now? um, So we can really feel each other, you know, to be able to initiate some leadership in that way um, can really help the other person to perhaps let down their guard a little bit and to feel safe for that period of time. Yeah. And that's, I I love that. And it's kind of the concept of compartmentalizing things. And it's um, knowing that we can't fix everything that has gone on the last few weeks. We can't fix the ladders in the living room right now. I don't want to fix the ladders in the living room right now or fix all of this. Mm -hmm. I just want to be with you and the person who I fell in love with. And so let's put this in a box or put this somewhere else and put Mm -hmm. it on the shelf and let's just be with each other. Yeah, that's huge. Being able to take overwhelming, sometimes being able to take overwhelming emotions or overwhelming thoughts and just be like, right now is not the time to talk or process through these. I just want to be with you. Yeah, right. Right. love that. And a little piece of the self-talk that I would suggest right in there is as you're doing that within yourself, because I do teach people a lot about how to work within themselves with their emotions and their, um, what I've consider to be parts or sub personalities Mm -hmm. is to be very kind to the part of yourself that's pissed at your partner. (laughs) Validate that part. Validating that part. Like, Hey, you know, you are on it. You know, you're not wrong. You're right. There's, you know, there's definitely some stuff down there that shouldn't be there. And we have to deal with that. And I love you because you want to make sure everything gets done for our family and you're awesome. And would you mind, or maybe you'd like to take a rest for a few minutes, you know, can that part, you know, like this part of myself, can you kind of like soften a little bit because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be good for anyone if, you know, we never have a chance to connect with each other as human beings. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Well, let's talk more about that part stuff because I know that's a part part. It's a part of your bigger program. Yes, um, and so I know that you have a program that's specifically about bliss and mm-hmm. it includes parts work. Mm-hmm. And this may be something that other individuals watching out there, you might not know what parts work is. 
Um, so could you explain a little bit more about that and how that relates to maybe yes. sex or sex? Yes. And yet another acronym. So for me, the word bliss stands for befriend and lead your internal sexual system. Okay. So this is based on the idea developed by someone named um, Dr. Richard Schwartz, who founded something called the internal family systems model mm -hmm. that um, just very succinctly that we have basically sub personalities. And we also have a core self that is larger than those sub personalities. Um, and that the personalities in there can also be, you know, just think of them as parts of yourself. They have relationships with each other. And so you can help those parts of yourself to relate in a healthy way with each other and to relax so that your authentic self can shine through. Beautiful. So parts can also be, in other words, like if people use other words, it could be roles that you play or roles that you have within yourself. You're a parent, but then you're also a partner. And then you're also someone who likes to play and be, be childlike sometimes. Yeah. Similar. Well, sort of like when you're in different roles, you may have different parts of yourselves predominant. Oh, okay. Right. So um, if I have a part of myself, that's very um, paranoid, you know, just to protecting me, like always like not trusting people that could come out in lots of different ways in my life. Right. And in, in the different roles, but when I can kind of befriend that part of myself and find out what it's really trying to do, because we believe that all of our parts have a positive intent for our survival. Mm -hmm then I can befriend that part. And, you know, maybe in the, in this realm of sexuality, I could get to know that part. Like, what do you have to do with my sex life? And it's like, well, I make sure that, you know, you don't get close to anyone that might hurt you, you know? And so then there's scary, ways, but that it also might, sometimes can push people away, might yeah. push people away or, you know, so, um, yeah, so it's it's a mindful, it's a process of mindfulness and self-awareness. So I find it's really helpful for, lots of kinds of people, but folks who have challenges with attention and focus and self-regulation, um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to really become aware of yourself and very embracing of all of yourself. So we're not saying there's nothing that doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you, nothing defective. It's just sometimes your parts may be mm -hmm. overactively uh, protecting you or overactively doing things that are inhibiting your ability to be intimate with another human. Perhaps. Right, right. And so if we wanted to talk about sex again, and the maybe the internal experience of that, and I want to include self pleasuring as part of a healthy sex life, um, for those who choose it, um, as well as people who are not in committed relationships. No. But there's a there's an internal experience that goes along with sex, right. And so, um, you know, and some people will have more trouble than others tracking their sensations during a sexual experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, for some people, their sexual response is so strong and maybe they're focused externally on a screen or on a super sexy partner that they don't give it a second thought. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of other people, it takes a little more attention, you know, to not get distracted or to really track sensations or to really tune into um, hmm, what would feel good right now, as opposed to just repeating the same sexual script every time mm -hmm. you know, yeah, to get it, into bed. I'm going to interrupt real quick. And absolutely the individuals that I work with adults with ADHD, a lot of them do feel like they're not in touch with their body sensations mm -hmm. sometimes because their mind can take them so many places and it's a rapid car, a rapid race car in their head. That's just spitting around of all these thoughts. And so I really, it does. And I try to teach mindfulness as well, because it's being mindful of not only your thoughts, but being mindful of your body, being mindful of what's going on around you, the people around you, it, it takes practice, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it absolutely is necessary mm -hmm. for um, not all like sexual experiences, intimacy, and, and just helping manage ADHD symptoms too. Right. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, when we look at sexuality as a way of circulating energy throughout your body, then being able to track that energy and notice kind of where it is and where it's blocked and mm -hmm. how to be maybe engaging different um, tech, you know, ideas for how to maybe move some of those blocks or, you know, follow some of 
the um, creativity that might be there. Mm -hmm. I think it can, um, you know, really amplify someone's sex life, right? So it's like, I work with people all over the map. Like there's people for whom just being able to not dislike sex is a win. You know what I mean? Just to be okay with sex is a win. But there's other people who are like, you know what? I'm just kind of bored. Like I, you know, I'm always looking for something new and they might feel like they always have to look outside of their relationship for something new, or they have to get the newest, hottest, you know, porn or the newest, hottest toy or the newest, hottest, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I find for a lot of people, this process and IFS is actually kind of catching on like wildfire right now, because it creates a lot of curiosity about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it keeps things interesting to say, hmm, who's in here right now? Like what parts of me are here? You know, who's showing up right now? You know, who, who's, you know, what's happening in my body? Where is my energy going? Um, so there's sort of an, a process of awareness and inquiry that can keep people very engaged. Mm -hmm. And you can have a lot of very surprising insights and realizations. You can yeah. get to know different parts of yourself that occupy different parts of your body, even your genitalia, you know, it might seem like some people have a name for their genitals, That's a true. character or a personality. But then sometimes when you really pay attention there, maybe it turns out there's actually like 10 personalities down there. And, you know, every square inch is like a different, you know, there's a little bit of a different part um, that's associated with that area and maybe wants different things or has different discomforts or has a different fantasy. Um, and so when you can start to really listen and dialogue mm -hmm. to greater and greater levels of attunement, that would be a more um, kind of practiced level of attunement. It can create like just a lot of fun and interest. Ooh, yes, let's have more fun and interest. <laughs> yes, please. And yes. And one of those things as someone with ADHD, making mm -hmm. things more interesting. And mm -hmm. I love how you said that a lot of times people put their energy externally, and this could also be externally. We can put our energy externally into trying to find more new, new mm -hmm. novelty, interest, et cetera. But there's so much to explore within our own bodies mm -hmm. and to get to know our authentic self, to get to know our bodies. Mm -hmm. that is also a pretty cool thing. And Absolutely. we have to walk around in these bodies our whole life. So why not right. get to know it a little bit better so you can have more fun in it? And when you know your own body, then when you are with a partner or with partners, there's a little more to share. You know, like one question that stumps people a lot and is like people get together with someone and they're like, so what do you like? <laughs> what do you the person's like, what do you like and you know it's like how do you answer that either you you're listing things you've already done before that you liked right so you're looking at your greatest hits you know or <laughs> or you don't really know right because um maybe you don't always like the same thing or maybe you don't really know your body that well or maybe you know what I mean you haven't really maybe you've gone along with what other people wanted and you don't truly understand what you want or you're right yeah so I like to help people learn ways to be present, you mm -hmm. know, that like the secret, you know, my belief is that we all have these six S's, which I haven't shared with you yet um, inside, which are the qualities of that authentic self um, is safe and that it's not going to harm us. It's mm -hmm. sensual, it's spacious, sensitive, steamy, and satisfied. Ooh, I need to see all those. Yes. <laughs> yes. And in fact, I have a, Free handout on my website at patricia.rich.com. That's an infographic that has the six S's and it explains them a little bit more. If people are interested oh, in that, I download that. Okay, yes, yes. Um, and these are qualities that we already have. So I like to. A lot of people feel like they're not good enough sexually, and I like to say, well, you know, we all have these qualities. We just need to get out of our own way to access them. Mm -hmm get out of our own head, get out of our own way, get yeah. out, you know, shame, or sometimes it's also stress, shame that gets in the way right. of feeling sensual, sexy. I forgot the S's already. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's, there's a bunch of them. So, um, and then our different subpersonalities may have jobs in relation to these, right? So if we're not feeling safe, then we probably have lots of parts that are busy trying to help us with that, you know, trying to help us feel safe. Mm -hmm. And if we're not tuned into our sensuality, maybe there's some beliefs there that some of our parts are holding that maybe it's not, not okay. You know, maybe it's not okay as a woman or as a 
fat person or as a queer person or a black person or, you know, like there's these messages we take in from the culture about how we're allowed to express our sensuality, how much room we can take up, you know, just all that kind of stuff. And in the work that I do with people, I help people to sort of separate out those external beliefs and to be able to work um, to separate those more and make more, that leads to the, the spacious S, like to feel more spacious inside yeah. um, so that there's more room for, a, a, you know, just a more expansive kind of sexuality. Yeah, there's so, that's beautiful work. Absolutely. There's so many messages that we get mm -hmm. from the shoulds of what we should do and what society says that we should be like. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does make you feel right. boxed in and just right. like, I don't like that feeling. So yeah, mm -hmm. shedding some of that, getting rid of that so that you can yeah. actually have space and get to know yourself and start to love yourself again. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful work. Absolutely. And so, you know, the ADHD is like one element of many elements, you know, because sexuality is so complex. It's like, so it just brings together so many different threads of who we are and how we were raised and the culture we live in and what we want for ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that ADHD is just one or more threads running through. So knowing our own rhythms, knowing what we need in order to show up as our best self, um, you know, knowing our times of day, even, or our substance habits or medication, you know, some people think, oh, I don't use my medication, my ADHD medication. Um, the weekends, I only use it when I have work to do at school or something like that. And I know not everyone takes medication, but for some people who do, they find like, oh, I didn't realize how much it would help me in bed, you know, like that. I just can't, it really helps me to focus on my physical experience and not be so inundated with all these random thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, so just all different ways of noticing how you can show up at your best. If you prioritize sexuality, not just as a, I find a lot of people feel like it's sort of a, um, sure. junk food or something like, <laughs> okay. you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's something I have to do, or I do it on the side or it's something that's not that important. Um, mm -hmm. For some people, right, and to realize, like, no, like, let's bring that back in here because that's your life force energy, you know. And this is something that can really help you to feel good and to feel alive and to have um, pleasure yeah. in your life. Yeah, that connection and that energy that you're describing, just mm -hmm. being able to um, move that and being able to use that. Sometimes mm -hmm. the sec like that energy can create motivation. That energy can mm -hmm. help you be more creative actually. Mm -hmm. And yes, and just yeah. who you are and be authentically who you are. I think those mm -hmm. are, yes, those are good goals. I yes. <laughs> One more thing I would like to mention is that I am uh, very attuned to consent and that um, the self-awareness we're talking about allows people, I think, to give a more embodied um, yes, no, or maybe to sexual encounters and opportunities, even with themselves and certainly with others. So when we can have that, take those beats and take that pause and notice where we are, we can make conscious decisions, you know, and for some people, the right decision is no, you know, and if the relationship isn't feeling safe, or there's just too much, feels like not enough respect or not enough space or who God knows what health issue, you know, there's a million reasons that somebody might not be available. So I just don't want to be saying like, oh, sex is great for everyone all the time. Cause you know, it isn't. So I just want to really empower people that are listening to get to know themselves in a way where they can kind of recognize their yeses, nos, and maybes, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, have some tools to discern that. Of course, of course. And it, it's, it takes some steps sometimes to get there as, as we've talked about, you mm -hmm. know, figuring out how to push messages from the external world out of, you know, make space so that you can actually recognize your own thoughts, your own sensations, and then making sure you're safe and making sure this is what you want in your life. Maybe it doesn't fit with what you want right now. Maybe your goals and your ambition are elsewhere, but mm -hmm. yeah. you have to, once, first yeah. of all, tune with the beats, <laughs> get into right. the first and then yeah. recognize if that's what you want to give consent. Yeah. I'm thinking of someone I worked with who uh, really enjoyed sex. It was a woman. Um, she really enjoyed sex, but she found that it would just shatter her focus, you know, because she 
would have great big orgasms and then she'd be exhausted and she could not muster any executive functioning for like a day. Needed a day. Oh man, that's <laughs> it's pretty good. But like, you know, but she learned like she wasn't someone who could have, you know, morning sex before going to work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, so she'd say, realize I have to say no in these scenarios, but I can really have a hell of a good time in this scenario, you know, if my kids go to their dad's house or whatever it is, you know, like, and I don't have any responsibilities. I can really be all in and have a great time and then get myself together <laughs> re refreshed. Yes. And ready. And that is, you know, knowing yourself once again, knowing what that energy brings and it could be it could lead to distraction. That's interesting. I always think of it like helping, maybe helping focus energy yeah. for some people. It does. Yeah. yeah. It's not even distraction. It's sort of just like, um, just exactly. breaking up the focus. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's not exactly like a lot of other thoughts are there either. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's just like a pre like actually when we are really Zen and really present, we maybe just don't get as much time, <laughs> you know, but in a good way. <laughs> Yes, yeah. there's, there is that balance of needing a little stress and a little anxiety to make us work towards goals and accomplish things. But when we're just relaxed, everything's okay. It's all good. <laughs> well, I think that this has been a fun conversation and I truly, truly appreciate your time today. Um, I always like to end with a fun question and then ask about how people can contact me, contact you later on. So let me let me first ask, what are some fun things that you do to relax mm -hmm. and um, things that you like to do to just help with your stress or help with yeah. focus? Well, I love to be out in nature in any way that I can. And I really like to dance and I've been going to conscious dance events. I was doing it more before the pandemic and trying to get myself, you know, finding opportunities uh, to do that more now again, but I love dancing and movement and hiking and being near water in any form um, just really calms my whole body down. Absolutely. I love dance too, quite a bit. And, and uh, I'm going on a retreat this weekend that includes dance and lakes and hiking. So come with me, Patricia. Yeah, I wish I could. That sounds fabulous. Yeah. Well, is there a second part of your question? It was there was so yeah. if people out there out in YouTube land want to get in contact with you, mm -hmm. how can they reach you? I, I know, think you mentioned your website before, but let's go ahead and say yes, it. you can. That's probably the best way if you go to patricia.rich.com and you'll see there's a link there to join my private Facebook group. There's a freebie offer. You can see a little bit more about me. Part of my work is with their other therapists. So I like to help therapists to get more comfortable with their own sexuality so they can help their clients with theirs. Um, and then I also do coaching and consulting for people who are wanting to bring this perspective to their own sex lives. That's great. You have so many beautiful things to teach people and so many beautiful acronyms that you've shared. Okay. I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to everything. And I really think you're doing great work out there. That Thank you so much getting people connected to themselves and others is that's beautiful work. So mm -hmm. thank you for your time today, Patricia. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. This was lots of fun.